What's up, y'all? It's me, Erica, and we are down here. Peace, y'all. Take care of each other. Protect your energy. What's up, everybody? It's me, Erica, and this is your Ladies Who List ATL review recap. Um, we start off where we left off. Go ahead and like, subscribe, and comment if you even know you stopped by. We started where we left off, where Crystal and Robin are having a conversation. And basically, Crystal and Robin are, you know, trying to figure out how they basically got to this place after four weeks. Um, you not reaching out to a friend, you know, like after four weeks. I remember last week we were saying that, you know, depending on whose perspective you relate to the most is who you think is, you know, wrong or right. Right. And who should have made that call? Robin doesn't feel that she should have called Crystal. Crystal feels that Robin should have called her. Crystal doesn't feel like she should have called Robin. Um, Robin says, you hit my hand. Um, and she says, well, you were in business that you didn't have any place being. How did you, how were you sitting over there and then wound up like right next to me? I feel like I'm walking on eggshells and lately in this relationship, not in totality, but lately. I feel hurt too. She goes, okay, go ahead. This is one thing that people do and it drives me insane. If I tell you, okay, go ahead, you keep harping on the fact that I'm not letting you speak. And for the next five minutes, you are telling me how I didn't allow you to speak instead of saying what it is you need to say. Okay, okay go ahead. Well, if you would just allow me to speak. Okay, go ahead. And you just keep really interrupting me. Okay. Go ahead. And see, I just can't even tell you how I... I told you, go ahead, four times. Why are you still talking about how I'm not allowing you to speak? Go ahead. However, Robin, you don't allow people to speak. You don't. As soon as you hear something you don't like, you jump in and you interrupt. So, yeah, you were interrupting Crystal while she was trying to explain it. You did. And then you're like, okay, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. And then she goes, oh, I told you four times, okay, go ahead. And then Crystal does something that I would um, label as passive aggressive. I get it. I get it. It goes along with, I understand. And you know the motherfucker doesn't understand, but you just saying it, I understand. I get it. She was like, okay, girl, I'm getting up. So she tries to get up. She goes, I want to enjoy Kiana's party. And I, I, I like circled this because later on, later on, um, Robin mispronounces Kiana's name. Sorry, I had some little technical difficulties. I had to make sure I had the thing plugged in and then. It was connected. Hopefully, hopefully we're connected. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I did notice that she pronounces her name correctly right here. And then at the horseback riding thing, she m mispronounces it. I'll get to that because y'all already know how I feel about people mispronouncing people's names. I, I will get to it. I was hurt by you standing over me. I was trying to console you. You're expecting me to be perfect in an unpredictable situation. You're offended and you're more upset at the people who don't really care about you. And I was like, wow, she's really gaslighting because you are actually defending the people that you're not supposed to care about either. You're supposed to care about her more. So while you were while you were asking her to care about you more than the people that were offending her, she's expecting the same in return. I thought it was weird that she flipped it like that when you were actually doing the same exact thing. So Kiana comes over and she goes, why don't you guys go to the courtyard to finish, 
finish. Kiana gives her toast, which it sounded really nice, you know. Um, she talked about respecting black women and being in the industry. And she thanked her husband from the bottom of her heart, said that he's been very supportive to her and all of these things. So back outside, um, Robin explains to Crystal, you know, I don't congregate with women. And when I do, if I feel like I'm attacked, I'm going to attack back. That's just me. And you know that I felt like I was on trial. You knew Kiana had a problem with me before we had the sit down. Um, Crystal mishandles the truth. She says, no, she didn't. And never mind the shot of her looking to the side, looking like very pleased at the confusion that was happening in her presence. I noticed that. I don't know when that shot was taken of her sitting there kind of smiling at all the shit going on. But it seemed like you were a little pleased with how Robin was relating to the women. Again, validating. Like internally, you're like, see, I was right. I told you she couldn't get along with women. I don't know who took that shot of her, but that was to me. A little, it was a glimpse for me. You withheld information from me and I'm supposed to be your best friend. I didn't do it with malice or hurt, she said, but you left me out there to be attacked. She did. She did. She didn't even warn her that Kiana's coming and well, I saw her the other day and I was asking her, you know, about this and she told me that she had some issue with you about holding her license or something like that. So she'll, she's probably going to bring it up. So just so that you're prepared. You literally left your home girl out there with no armor, thinking she was coming into an environment where she was actually making a business like a venture, like trying to get some business off the ground with these women. And you didn't tell her that these women had problems with her. I felt like you left her out there. You guys let me know what you think. Do you feel like Crystal left Robin out there by not giving Robin a heads up? I felt like that. And you know how I am. If I feel like somebody's attacking me, I'm going to attack back. She says, well, how you perceive that night. No, no, no. We're not playing these games. Your word choice is very important. I didn't perceive nothing. Bitch, this is what the happened. This is what happened. And I got upset. And I don't understand how you don't see how I couldn't have gotten upset and how my anger Yes. And I felt like Robin should have apologized. I'm sorry that I hit you. That was out of line. But let me tell you, because I felt like you were kind of egging on or antagonizing the moment. And I felt like, you know, you putting your hand and telling me I'm triggered. That really triggered me. I shouldn't have hit you. I'm sorry. But I'm telling you why I did that. And, I, you know, I'm, I apologize for that. But you saying you're triggered, you're triggered, you're triggered. And you know that I have some mental health issues and I'm coping with that. And and you know how I deal with women. But yet and still, you wouldn't prepare me. Like, you wouldn't prepare me. Was this a test to see if I could do it? Like, why didn't you prepare me and tell me that Kiana had a problem with me? And Kira had a problem with me. Two of the main girls that I want to get involved with. Why wouldn't you tell me that? Other people there were telling me that you didn't even have, have my back the way that you should have. Why? Because they want your business? And then she was like... Girl, get your money out the bank. Get your no, get your get your money, get your money out the bank. Get your mind out the bank. She told her, get your mind out the bank. It's not even about that. So you could see where Crystal's head is. I don't know. Get your mind out of the bank, she tells her. She tells her, I'm willing to talk about more stuff. We're fine. I'm giving you some grace. Well, tell me, stand here and tell me so I know it's real. She said, because it's coming out of my mouth, you know it's real. I'm going to give her one more try. So they're going to continue on with their relationship. So Robin goes to visit Amy and Mazzy, who has, they have a YouTube channel. They have a really nice house. I was like, that, that house is really nice. I looked them up too, because I was like, who is April and Mazzy? You know, people be having thousands and thousands of subscribers and you will have never heard of them. That's how large um, YouTube is, really. They have 368,000 subscribers. Yep. 
And then he got his own channel with 67,000 subscribers. And then about three weeks ago, they were on, um, turned out with um, T.S. Madison. So they're moving and their house is really nice. And what I, what I thought was actually really cool is when Robin and them were talking and they were saying like along the way, I not only sold you this house, but I made sure you understood what was happening. Like you were educated along the way. Robin's ideas, each one teach one. I poured into you, pour into someone else. Um, you know, that's how I started off. I bought my first house at 21 and then I used that house and bought another house and used that house and bought another house. And that's been my story. I love it. I fucking love it. I fucking love it. While she was at April and Mazzy's house, her mother calls with her sister and her niece on the phone. And she says she's rebuilding her family. And it's hard when people don't share similar thoughts. They don't share similar goals. They have different ideas. And, um, and it's hard. And then I thought it was cute when they were like, she was like, it was her, it was her birthday and she didn't tell anybody. And they were like, oh, it's your birthday. And she was like, yeah, but you don't know. It's like, it's coming up. And then they were like, let's go out. We're going to do a big for your birthday. She was like, no, I'm too shy. <laughs> I was like, yes, come on, Robin. Yeah, right. All right. So Tiana is visiting with Quinetta and Mario. Quinetta is the woman who is the designer for those modern homes that um, Tiana has listed. And there's this ranch property. Um, it is. It was built in 1979. It is for her son and his wife. It is three bathrooms. She said three bedroom, but on the on the little description, it said one bed one bathroom. So I don't know. So I'm sure there's. I don't know. So it said three bedroom, three bathroom, two thousand and sixty eight square feet on five acres, bitch, for five hundred and forty nine thousand dollars. That's it. That's it. And then when when the when he when she told him he was like how much is this about ten million twelve million she was like no it's five hundred and forty nine thousand he was like you better put an offer <laughs> you better put an offer on this he was like I couldn't even get a condo where I'm from for five hundred and forty nine thousand dollars on five acres of land a ranch I was like that it's in the cut it's in the country. Now you in the probably in the woods somewhere in the forest somewhere. That's awesome. That was that place was awesome. I was like, oh my god, look at all that land. And that's literally how you build the wealth. Can you imagine? Just all of that, like literally all of that, and you can build on it too. Build on it too. Get your little everything, your little license and stuff build another house on there. Like you can have, like, I don't know. I was like, that's good. Yeah, I was with the son. I was like, uh, 540, that baby, five acres of land with nothing built on it is $549,000 with nothing built on it. This had a damn house, a ranch and something looked like a stable. That's what it looked like when they did the aerial view. I'm here for it. I love to see it. Kira goes with B. Simone with her Air Force Ones and white crew socks with black leggings and a black shirt. Where is she from? Girl, that is not cute. And why does she keep wearing them thick ass, them thick soled Air Force Ones? Girl, you have on black leggings, white crew socks and all white Nikes. Where is she from? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Girl, what? That don't go. That don't go. Now her place that she liked, it was really nice too. That looked like a, it looked like it was like in a little industrial loft community. That's what it looked like from the um, balcony. That place was 2,271 square feet, three bedrooms, three and a half baths, bitch, <laughs> in a building. Okay. Now the terrace was really, really nice sun windows all of that but for six hundred and seventy seven thousand three hundred and eighty six dollars so you can move far out and go far away you can live in a city you don't have as much land it's a nice space nice terrace nice everything like when you move out like that that's like you moving your tribe out there like me myself i would love by myself 
baby what some fucking dogs a few goat some chickens baby oh see and that's the one thing that's why georgia ain't it because you can't even fucking grow cannabis out there anyway um Tiffany and Tiana, they had, they are, you know, outside playing with their kids and stuff, having a play date. They are going to plan a Libra day. They're going to go horseback riding. It's going to be Tiffany, Tiana, Kiana, and Robin. Um, and they were like, oh my God, I want to see, I want to see Kiana on a horse. I want to see the sparkle on the horse. So Robin and Crystal, um, Robin and Crystal, they meet up for, uh, Robin's birthday and um Ro crystal brings robin this huge bouquet of flowers it was really pretty um they sit down she says she's going to give her another chance uh crystal is like your favorite sweater and it's it, it itches you but it's your favorite sweater she tells her you seem happy is it penis I know men and women who correlate a person's happiness with whether or not they have dick in their proximity. That is a sad existence. If you don't think a person can be happy without having dick, that you should be ashamed of yourself that you would attribute someone's happiness to having penis in their proximity you should be ashamed of yourself and see this is why people think definitely not penis it's coming though it's coming though but there are that i mean those conversations happen i mean there's conversations they're to the point where people will tell you if you're in a bad mood it's because you don't have any penis the penis is the mood changer Zane, he would marry me tomorrow, but he's Polly. What is that? Robin wants to look up Polly, but he wants to tell you yes. That's that's one thing. One thing that I think for a lot of men who want to be, they want to be Polly, they're used to navigating monogamy with deception and deceit that when it's time to actually say hey you know it's okay that you have relationships with other women they men do not like to hear women be okay with that because then they assume that you're doing the same thing and they don't like that but polyamory is different polyamory means that you are able to have intimate connections with more than one person at a time it is not monogamy and you mean everyone knows about everybody. I don't know who this guy is, Zane. Um, Robin says, I wouldn't get in a relationship with him. Um, if he, you know, if you want to be his friend, great. But it's not somebody to be in a relationship with. She doesn't know what Polly is. She looks it up. What? He wants to tell you? Right. Because you are all so used to. And what, what, and unfortunately, because women are socialized to want monogamy because they've been socialized to also believe that monogamy is suit suitable for them, um, which leaves you partnering with people who probably shouldn't be partnered with for the sake of love instead of actually security, which actually where Polly comes in, you know, it, you know, where the man, the rich men get the women because a woman in her right mind, if she practices polyamory she's gonna go towards the guy with the money the guys with the money right to be taken care of because they can take care of not going to practice polyamory or polygamy or whatever the hell you want to practice in a poly you know um template with broke men that no that's defeats the purpose it defeats the purpose <laughs>
don't do that. <laughs> that's not it. That's not how you do that at all. At all. But anyways. Anyways. Um, I don't think you should be a part of that. Um, I'm happy being single. I'm going to go with a no to Zane. Um, and then they start talking about Tiffany. They bring up Tiffany. Now I was, I, I feel like I need to go back and watch this. Cause I don't know if Robin was doing something shifty with the way that she was telling the story to Crystal. But when she said something about Tiffany, Crystal acted as if she didn't know what Tiffany she was talking about. Bitch, the Tiffany that you're on a cast of a television show with. You know who the fuck Tiffany we're talking about. Was there more than the girls that are casted on this show? You know you're filming a show. You know there's a camera here. You know you're filming a show with Kira, Robin, Tiffany, Tiana, and yourself. But when... Robin says something about Tiffany. You say Tiffany who? You being, when she did that, I was like, okay, I'm cool on Crystal. I gave you, what episode is this? I didn't give you a lot of chances. Just when her, when she said Tiffany who? Not even the pick me shit. I could deal with the pick me shit because so many of y'all are like that, but it, it irks my nerves. But when you start acting stupid like that, Tiffany who? You know who Tiffany that that I don't like that. I don't like that. We're filming a television show. Don't act like you don't know the Tiffany I'm talking about. But I also feel like Robin, the way she was framing it was making it seem like Tiffany had a problem with Crystal. Did I read that wrong? I was like, girl, I need to go back and hear the way she framed it, because in the when she framed it to Tiffany, it made it seem like Crystal had the problem. And then Robin was like, you know, Tiffany you know, has everything Crystal wants. Cause I don't feel like Tiffany has a problem with Crystal, but I think Crystal might be a little jealous of Tiffany because Tiffany has what Crystal wants. I was like, Ooh, these women are friends. I guess girl. Sometimes. And I've had the experience, the person that you honestly think that is your BFF. It is actually really uh, your, your frenemy. Like you've been in a relationship with a frenemy and it's like, that is what Crystal and Robin look like. They look like frenemies. And it looks like one is being kept around the other to make the other feel a certain way. And I'll let you decide on who those, uh, who is who in the scenario. Um, I don't know Tiffany. I don't know about Tiffany. Um, I'm not able to relate to that. She had compassion for me. She was like, I know my friend and Tiffany basically needs to stay out of it. She said, why Tiffany is a mom. She doesn't have any time to think about why is someone mad at her. And then she said, that's Tiffany has what Crystal wants. So anyways, they go to, um, oh, okay. They go horseback riding. They do the horseback riding thing. It didn't look fun as fun as I thought it was. I didn't know they were just going to be going in a circle. I didn't expect for them to just be going in a circle. But anyways, they get off the horses. They look cute, actually. They really look cute. Kiana looked really cute in her little cowboy, little outfit. Um, Robin looked really cute. They, they all look really cute. <clears throat> Robin and Kiana, especially. But um, Tiana looked cute when she went to show that damn ranch. I said, come on, bitch. Her shorts and her hat together. I was like, yes, ma'am. I love it. I was here for it. So Tiffany asked Kiana about what happened with her and Crystal and T um, no, not Kiana, uh, Robin, Tiffany asked Robin and Robin says, we're fine. We're good. We're going to be fine. But what's up with y'all? I feel like it's a little tension between y'all or something. Is something up with y'all? She was like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have any concerns. I don't have anything. I don't really, you know, nothing, nothing. No. And she was like, okay, well, so just send her like a, like a DM on, on Instagram and you know she was like I'm, I'm, why would I do that I don't have nothing what what are we doing what are we talking about no I don't have to do that I'm not I'm not doing that then Robin says yeah I was trying to tell her that like really when people have children they ain't really thinking about stuff like that they think they have other priorities other things other things that they're thinking about take a priority over what some what some girl is thinking about right and um, Tiffany says something about her not looking to make friends, any new friends or something like that. So when Robin said, 
people with children don't understand. Kiana took offense. She took offense and you could tell in the words that she was using that she did not hear what Robin said. Now, Robin said, when people don't, and she was like, wait, I don't have kids. She says, I wasn't even talking about you. She said, but when you said your people, then you just need to be clear. If you were talking about Crystal, you should have said Crystal, which I completely agree. Because when you say people, or when I say y'all, people get offended because it's like, I, that's not, you ain't talking to me, but you said y'all. So I feel like you are talking to me, right? When you say people, girl, I'm people. I don't have any kids. Okay. So now that we have a backstory on Kiana and her IVF journey, right? Is it IVF? I think it's IVF. Okay. Her fertility journey. I'll just say that. I don't know if it's IVF or what's going on. We know that she has accepted that some people put a value on a woman if she has a child or not. So Kiana understands that in a society, um, people put value on women, whether or not they're able to breed or keep a man. We do. And it's unfortunate. It's sad. It's fucked up. But a lot of women internalize that and they will see themselves as less than valuable if they're having issues with fertility, even if, right, to the point where a lot of them take the brunt for the infertility journey when it's really the husband. But that's a different story, right? But kind of along the same lines where a woman sees like, if I if I don't have children, I'm not a woman. If I don't do this, I, you know, all of these things that society really puts on you. And so she's projecting. And that's all she was doing. And and it's good that we understand that what she was doing, she she understood what she was doing. No, Robin wasn't talking about you, but the way that Robin said people without kids. And then she was like, it doesn't make the person less valuable. So you could tell where her head was. It didn't have nothing to do with Robin. It was what she had going on in terms of her fertility and how when you say, when people don't have kids, they don't understand. And she took complete offense to that. She was like, well, I don't have kids. And I, and what she was saying, if she listened, Robin said, when people have children, the things that they think about their children, the priority of thoughts is not on whether somebody likes me or not. It's probably on their children, basketball, baseball, Spanish homework, whatever, you know, getting somebody's new glasses or some, thinking about braces, and stuff, all of this stuff you're thinking, you're not thinking about whether Crystal likes me or not, right? So that's how she did, but we know the backstory. So I'm, I give Kiana grace um, and that's, I, there's nothing else to say because we know exactly where all of her energy was coming from. There's no, there's no reason to, um, be mad at her or demean her. We know exactly where her feelings were coming from. So because we have that piece of information, we understand how she completely took something and made it about herself. She just heard bits and pieces of people without children don't understand. And that was it for her. She was like, what? That triggered her. And then she started projecting. That's nothing I could say. I'm like, okay, that's exactly what she was doing. When I, I saw, I think it was on Kim Pyre's channel. And she said that she, she was like, and I was projecting. She know exactly what she was doing. It's nothing to say. She was aware of what she did. She did it. And we all know what she, why she was doing it. And that, that's actually a, a great lesson for all of us to know when you can hear when, how people are responding to something you say. And it's like, I didn't even say nothing like that. Where are you getting that? That's something in their head, something that they're talking about and how they have filtered what you said. They've applied a bunch of shit that don't have nothing to do with what you said. They have just applied all of their filters to your statement. And that's how misunderstandings happen. And 
conflict arises because of it, because people have filtered what you said and applied what, the, how they, whatever it is. And that's it. That was it for the episode. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Take care of each other. Protect your energy.